You are listening to Mining Stock Education, where you'll learn from the top leaders in the natural resource sector and uncover quality mining investment opportunities. With our two-hour meeting we had with the exchange even this morning, uh, it really seems like we're, we're down to just um, small questions remaining. Uh, dealing with the the lineups, the exchange will never give you a definitive answer until you have a, you know a date and and everything ready to go. Uh, given how fast we're going to respond to our two remaining comments, we're really hoping for beginning of May to commence trading. We have a reserve symbol of TSLV, Tier One Silver, so we're really happy with that, and uh, we think it's going to be a popular one. Welcome back to Mining Stock Education. I'm your host, Bill Powers. And in today's show, we're going to be getting an update from Tier 1 Silver. Website is tier1silver.com. And if you recall, this company is a result of the spin out of the Peruvian asset, the silver focused asset uh, in Southern Peru that Oren held last fall. And when Oren merged with East Main to form Fury Gold, Tier 1 was one of the spin out companies and it's been unlisted for several months. We were expecting a relisting in February, but it's a little behind schedule. So joining me today for an update is Ivan Bebek, the chair, as well as the new CEO, Peter Dembicki. Peter, welcome onto the show for the first time. And how about you give us the latest update in your conversation with the exchange? When should investors expect a listing of, and a retrading of Tier 1 Silver? Thanks for having me, Bill. Great to be on, be on the show. I've heard a lot about it in the past. Uh, we are working daily with the exchange. It's obviously, you've heard me say, and, and I would say time and time again on an ASAP basis, it truly is. Uh, there, there are details we're, we're working through to get you know, up and listed on the venture. Uh, the exchange is extremely, extremely backlogged and uh, with the amount of issuers coming to market. So it's painful. Uh, to wait. And I know our shareholders have been extremely patient with us, uh, given the delays and the initial expectations, but know that we will not commence any drilling on our property before we actually get listed. We want our shareholders to have every opportunity to have this company listed and up and running. So is there a, a month time frame? Uh, not to pin you on it, because I know it's not ultimately your decision, but is there any more information you could tease out perhaps? Sure. I mean, when, with our two-hour meeting we had with the exchange even this morning, uh, it really seems like we're, we're down to just um, small questions remaining. Uh, dealing with the, the lineups, the exchange will never give you a definitive answer until you have a, you know, a date and, and everything ready to go. Uh, given how fast we're going to respond to our two remaining comments, we're really hoping for beginning of May to commence trading. And do you have a tentative ticker symbol or is that still undecided? We do. We have a reserve symbol of TSLV, Tier 1 Silver. So we're really happy with that. And uh, we think it's going to be a popular one. And of course, the flagship is your Curry Bio project where you've seen some phenomenal uh, surface silver grades, as well as the geophysics and everything you've been engaged in has generated a lot of interest. Can you give us a status update? You know, your steps towards drilling this, where are we at? Mm -hmm. So we have our drill permit in hand, which is called an FTA in Peru. That's the was the biggest hurdle. And uh, with with Peru and exploration, you're dealing with multi uh, multi different kind of um, hurdles that you have to go through. And one of the biggest ones is is the many communities in Peru that negotiating with the government. It was COVID. Uh, Peru is in an election year. So there was a lot in the air. And the fact that they determined it would take 10 to 12 months for us to receive this permit, and we got it in five, really speaks to the quality of our team on the ground and Peru handling our negotiations and applications for us. So that is the, the biggest one. Uh, the, the few smaller permits that we followed up with, with water and access have all been granted. So we're ready to go. We are ready to go and get drilling. The one thing that uh, is stopping us from drilling today. Obviously, we're never going to drill without our company being listed, but also uh, there's a rainy season where Kurabai is situated. And technically, we got to wait for that officially to be over, even though this year there was slightly less rain than on history. So, so many different elements at play, uh, so many different uh, things we had to navigate throughout the process. But the bulk of it's done, permits in hand, access is granted, drill contractors ready to go. 
everything is 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 set up. So next thing is left is for us to get listed. Let's commence drilling. Let's get this thing going. You also yes, just Ivan. To, just to add there, Bill. Um, you know, first of all, um, you know, g- getting listed is is a lot more tedious than people think, and. Peter touched on how backlog the exchanges. Um, it's important to know when we asked the question today, what's the majority of the companies trying to get listed and it happens to be mining companies. And this is an extremely positive indication towards this resource market and where we're headed. And um, I know we're one of the biggest by market cap, you know, of, of coming to the market. And although we were trading on the Toronto and New York stock exchange, you know, when you isolate an asset out of a portfolio, it, it gets a bit more thorough scrutiny and, you know, for the benefit of everybody who's a shareholder or potentially wanting to be a shareholder, um, Curry Bio is new and most of the joy has come out during while we've been private. So, it, you know, it requires a bit more education and scrutiny and the exchange has done a phenomenal job of, um, you know, working through it. And uh, I think, you know, to Peter's comment, you, first week of May, we're going we're gonna to try and twist that into April as much as we can and do whatever is needed to do that. I know the technical team has worked all through their Easter weekend to make sure every bit of detail that was requested was met. So we are pushing, you know, 14 hours a day as needed to, as Peter said, be lightning fast in the response. And on the corporate side, Peter has been, you know, as much as he talks about how exciting it is to get with uh, drilling with what we have, he's been really championing this process and, uh, and and making sure we're all T's and I's are crossed as fast as quickly as possible. So, you know, I, I wish we were trading a month ago. Um, we missed a lot of people on our financing in terms of how amazing this opportunity has become. But, uh, you know, lastly, I'll point out, um, whether you own shares and are anxiously waiting to see some value in your account, as I certainly am, because I own a lot of shares, um, or you, you've missed it and you've heard how great the opportunity is, um, you know, we're, we're, we're weeks away now, not months. And, uh, you know, we're through the thick of it. So we're in the final T crossing, I dotting, and uh, can't wait to be trading soon. And uh, even more importantly, to, to be drilling, as Peter pointed out. Ivan, uh, you came from the financial side of the business before you became an executive. You recruited Peter to be the CEO. And Peter, you also came from the financial side being a broker. So the two of you teamed up and you did a financing. Talk to us about what you raised and what type of investor did you bring into the stock? Oh, I'll I'll start, Peter, and turn it to you. Um, Our biggest strength is our shareholders. And anyone who's tried to get into a funding or any banker that's pitched us a funding has gone a pretty specific response of how we finance our companies from the Oren side and previous to tier one. Um, Peter brought in a lot of new investors and we competed over who was going to get what in the book because we had so much interest in both sides. So from my side, I am thoroughly pleased with the new investors. I think we've, you know, done a great job, combined combined effort. And I think, you know, something that you touched on bringing Peter in from the financial side, we've strengthened our ability to finance considerably. And uh, Peter's definitely demonstrated that. And uh, I, I think that it's really nice to have a strong market finance team when you have such a big swing expirationally, that could be such a game changer for a share price and, and really go create not just a world-class discovery, but a world-class return in investments. But uh, that's it for me, Peter. You know, how'd it go for you on, on the financing? Yeah, you know, coming from the, the capital market side at Canaccord and the retail side, I've had my years where where I found a deal that I thought would would go exceedingly well and you're grinding away just to raise a few hundred grand and some, some come along and, and they really sell themselves. Uh, so, very complimentary of Ivan to to pump my tires on how well I've done, but really this was a project that that really sold itself, and it was based on a few things. One, you know, Ivan Ivan's history having two very successful exits in good markets and bad. Two, our technical team, uh, Michael Hendricks and David Smithson. These are former Newmont guys. They're applying what they used in the majors to an exploration company. So we've kind of taken the the shackles off them. They're 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 nimble. They're allowed to do what they want to do, and uh, and to have to have the project to that we that we have is is such an easy sell. And I'll even go further and say the data that we had in Curabaya when we raised that money was amazing. What we know on it now is phenomenal. And I think if we knew now what we knew knew then what we know now, uh, the financing would have been well north of 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 what we did so um it all came came in line 
And I, I joined the company at such a unique time as a you know reporting issuer, non-listed. And uh, you know, it was just really felt like I was the last one on board of a rocket ship taking off and and I was the last piece of the puzzle to come on board. And, and now we're we're all ready to go. We're firing, we're capitalized. You know, Ivan would come into the office and say, we're going to take less. And I'd be like, no, no, we got to take more. Like, and we had this ongoing battle and it was, we found a kind of common ground at the end of the day. But we, we were really fortunate enough with the quality of people that came into the financing that we could afford to be picky. And these, these investors that came in to support tier one, they want to see what we have. They're not investing in this to to exit on day one that that it's listed. They really believed in the project. They see the potential that it has as world class discovery, and they want to see how it turns out as we. And they got to wait a few more months with the restrictions because that's a four month hold for Canadians and six month for Americans. But uh, but well said, Peter. You know, I I think um, worth the wait is the most important word in the exploration business, Bill, as you're well aware. And um, this project, you know. It's described to us by many third parties as a, as a lottery ticket worth having in the portfolio. And um, I've done this for 20 years and I haven't seen something with as much robust grade on top of such a big target beneath surface. And, you know, we're not trying to just make a discovery. We're trying to make history here with one of the world's largest silver discoveries. And it might have a lot more behind that. But um, early days, great opportunity. I don't mean to push anxiety on all of you waiting for it to trade and to have access to it. But I will say that you'll get some time but before we turn the drills. And, you know, it's going to take a long time to tell people that Curry Buy is not a major discovery. And that's the biggest compliment you can give to a world-class swing exploration-wise. So if I do a, try to figure out your valuation, because you're not traded, so the market isn't telling me the valuation. If you raised money at a dollar Canadian per share. You did not give a warrant, so you're not going to bring in warrant flippers into the stock, as you've mentioned. That would imply a, a valuation of Canadian about $125 million market cap. Peter, you've put people into Ivan's company in Oren as a stockbroker. Uh, how would you explain that and how do you explain the valuation, implied valuation, I should say? Sure. And as, as most people that came into our financing were aware, we are a spin out of Oren resources and, and every Oren shareholder got, got one share for every one share of Oren that they received. So um, right away, we started with 112 million shares out. So it wasn't as if we went out and issued 125 million shares uh, just in tier one. Now, to me, that's a benefit because we know the quality of the shareholders that Ivan had at Oren, uh, Newmont, Gold Corp, uh, the funds, uh, that he has involved the high net worth individuals that have very close relationships with Ivan and Sean. So yes, on a on a on a fully diluted basis, 125 million shares out may seem uh, top heavy from from certain investor standpoint, given the stage of where we're at. However, given the quality of who those shareholders are made up of and the quantity of which they hold, uh, I'm I'm. I don't lose a, lose a wink of sleep over that, something like that. Everybody that came to Tier 1 to invest in it know, knew the valuation when they, when they wrote those checks. And it's the quality of the project and the quality of the team that lets us you know, really get excited about this and not worry too much about uh, valuations and, and where it's going to trade. Yeah, just, Bill, I would add there that um, I actually think it was cheap. We were being offered money quite a bit higher than where we took it. And... I don't say cheap without the the you know compliments that it could be risky and it could not be there, right? We all know there's a substantial amount of risk in the exploration business. The odds are against us, one in a thousand, et cetera. I've been there through the discovery of five million ounces at Keegan in my our first company that Sean and I created and watched the company go from 50 cents to nine dollars and watched investors benefit from that. I also got to see what 100 drill holes in the middle of the bear market when you know production clips are looming and expirations becoming way more challenging can occur where we sold Cade into Agnico Eagle at about 360 per share. And if you held Agnico shares, it went to $7 per share another year later, right? Um, in terms of tier one, you know, a lot of people identified the value in Oren to be with Sombrero in the last couple of years because we had been through Committee Bay a couple times, and it is my favorite gold project in the world. And you'll hear about more about that when we go drill it this summer. But in terms of where Tier One ranked and where it is, 
Sombrero took center stage, you know, big footprint, a lot of economic, potential economic copper and gold on surface, some historical drill holes that validate the third dimension. But um, when it came to tier one in Kiribati, you know, this was the classic story, Bill, of where a geologist says, hey, hey, partner, you know, this is it. You got to go get this at, a, at an early stage where you had to be a true optimist an explorationist to really dive in and believe. And ever since that first comment by Dave Smithson, you know, came out, it's gotten better. And Michael Hendrickson, his partner, our chief geologist and, and Dave, their partners forever. They, they both debated back and forth. Mike did what he's supposed to do as a technical partner with, with Dave and he challenged it. And so what about this? What about that? And we, we put this one through the ringer and every time it got questioned, the answers came back better than what would have satisfied the question. So when we come down to market cap and you look at $125 million valuation, um, we can drill a lot of different things here. Uh, we can drill you know, 10 to 20 meters of a kilo silver. We can drill 10 to 20 meters of 300 kilo silver because it's on surface and a kilo gold that to go with that. Um, we could drill 10 to 20 meters of 200 gram silver. You know, There's no assurances, no guarantees but those fantasies exist in the feeder structures that are about 200 feet to 300 meters vertically. When you get down to the emanating disseminated plus 45 millivolt target, you know, looking at that and market hasn't seen this yet, but there's some hundred to 200 meter sections of looks like in chargeability, you know, sulfide bearing veins that we're thinking sulfide would be silver or gold. You know, if we hit 100, 160 meters of a kilo or, or, or 100 gram silver, I mean, but it could be a kilo, it could be two kilo silver. We're now talking Aurelian type of numbers. If you remember back to Aurelian, the gold discovery in Ecuador, um, the coolest- It was part, your first big win, if I remember your story, right, Ivan? That was that was one of mine. Um, I, I sold it way too early and, you know, Aurelian was on its last straws, 20 cents a share. They basically ran their last few dollars to go find it. And they started drilling 100 to 200 meters of 20 gram gold plus, and stock went to $45 a share. So when I look at the market we're in today, this market is way better than the market Aurelian experienced. The stage of the bull market that we're going into is one that has something that wasn't prevalent before, which is a major production cliff. And it has a scarcity of discoveries of consequence. So that will give us a tremendous amount more of a premium. And we all know silver is the number one performing equity. You can look at Pan American Silver and a lot of the other silver companies, um, First Majestic, look at any silver story you've heard of. Look at how the market's performed in the last six months and tell me what's performed better. Gold stocks, silver stocks, copper stocks, silver still wins and it gets the best valuation. So, you know, what we stumbled upon to here is not normal. It's never been drilled before, which the risk goes way up when you say that. However, the evidence pointing towards a discovery is as good as it gets. As good as it gets anywhere in the world right now for a high grade world-class silver discovery. And it might sit on top of a big porphyry deposit too, which would be worth more than the biggest precious metal deposit, but that's another conversation. All I'm saying is that it's going to be six to 12 months really to figure out what's there. And we're going to, we're going to be very persevere. We're going to be very patient with the drilling. What's the fair market cap? Speculation is all up for debate as I've just made my case of why it should be worth more. But at the same time, you know, I think that from an investing standpoint, we picked the middle of the road. We could have gone higher. We could have gone lower. And it wasn't the price that mattered to us. It was the shareholders who we added to the registry and who was buying the funding that mattered. So when Peter and I went into the financing discussion, two, two finance or back, financial backgrounds, and said, who do we put? And I wanted less. He wanted more. Um, Peter was right to take a bit more to give us at least 12 months and two drill programs versus just the first drill program. We don't want to carry that much risk into our share price. It would create a vulnerability. Um, we also have enough money that if Curry Baya really fell on its face, we could pivot to one of our other assets in the portfolio. Second point was I told Peter in the response, and, and he fully agreed for, for, for intelligent reasons, I'm not as worried about how much I'm worried about who buys it. And I thank you all that participated. Um, I thank everyone that that supported us to get to this point. And, you know, it's it's as good as it could possibly get. I don't think there's any more we could get from Curry Baya to give us more confidence at this stage besides a drill hole. And it's hard to talk about it too much because I don't sleep at night because I worry about how big and how great this thing could be. Um, on the flip side of it, 
I think Peter's first major achievement, besides the luck that he brought in of getting drill permits on time or even earlier than we thought and driving things forward for the financing and the listing, I think his first major milestone for Peter, or where I'm going to send him a, a, a good cold Canadian beer, is going to be when we get listed. And the day that happens, um, there'll be a, a lot of cheersing going on. And although it's not going to make anybody money, you're going to see it in your portfolio come to life. And you know, the adventure we're all going to go on as shareholders is going to be worth it. And, and again, thank you for your patience, everyone, with COVID, with the exchange, with us. Um, we're, we're trying to be politely patient as we're waiting to get listing. We're, we're scratching pretty hard and fighting tooth and nail to, to do that sooner than later. Um, when we get listed, it's going to feel a lot better. But when we start drilling in May, you know, that's something that we don't necessarily need to put off. It's going to be an outstanding program to, to, to follow for six to 12 months to see if we've got it. And, uh, you know, buckle up and look forward to the ride. It's going to be a fun one. It's closer than you think. And uh, we're, we're pumped if that's not clear in this in this interview. And Peter, one thing before you go, I understand you're a champion rower. So what can you take from your rowing career to your new career here as the CEO of Tier 1 Silver? Yeah, seems like a lifetime ago probably 40 pounds ago at about 10 years ago. Um, I've been to the bottom of the well so many times. And right when you think when you're at your bottom, you find more energy and uh, you find a way to, to come out of it and, and keep pushing and keep pushing and, and, and never giving up. The biggest thing with rowing is just uh, it's the perseverance. It, it's, it's been, been going through uh, uh, extremely tough times mentally and physically uh, and, and as I said, going to the bottom of the well many times to find out who you really are. Uh, so yeah, this is, as I told Ivan, I, I don't, I don't have to come to work. I don't have to do this. I get to, it, it's, it's really enjoyable and uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. Ivan, any final thoughts? Yeah. Uh, on Peter's response there, the part that resonates with me real heavily is the, um, the bottom of the well. Um, we've been at Oren for five years. And this is a five-year opportunity in the making. This is not overnight. This was not six months ago. It took us four years to put the land position together. And we did it for reasons that paid dividends so far better than we thought it would, right? And at this stage here now, we're in the very mature stage, the most exciting stage of a company to be in. And that's to drill the inaugural holes on the back of such a big, comprehensive adventure which did have a lot of risk and challenges and bear markets in the background. You know, so I, I think from that point, uh, Bill, we're, we're looking at the most rewarding. We're looking at the gold medal, you know, at the finish line here. We entered the race. I'm going to use a rowing analogy as a team. We're all pulling hard. We're all pulling as hard as we possibly can. We, we see the finish line. We see we're able to do it. And we're just going to hope that the, um, that the, the perseverance and the work ethic works off. Now, if we don't make it on the first run, we're going to keep going. We're not quitters. We go until we deliver for shareholders and people become wealthy. And that's something that everyone can look forward to is that, you know, continued work ethic until we get it right. But uh, no, I think our odds are good. And I think we're, we're up for a great one here. Thank you, Ivan. Thank you, Peter. And to learn more about the company, go to tier1silver.com. It's not trading yet. It will be soon, as you've heard here today. So if you sign up uh, on their email list, you will get the email notification soon as the company knows when it will become trading. Thank you again, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you.